As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program, my friend. I am Rick Renner, and I want to say thank you for rendezvousing with me right here so we can dive into the 91st Psalm together. That's what we're studying this week in the program, and I want you to have a copy of the 91st Psalm, which you can display in your home or where you work. So we designed one for you, and that's what this is. This is the 91st Psalm, which we designed just for you. I framed mine. I want to have these words in front of me all the time. To be honest, these words are in my heart, but I also want them in front of my eyes, and I want you to have them in front of your eyes too. So we designed it for you, and it's free. If you'll just go to our website, you can download it and print it on your own printer. And if you don't have a printer, call the number on the screen or write us and we will get you a paper version. And when you get yours, you can frame yours like I have framed mine. The 91st Psalm is just so powerful. And that's why I also want you to have the whole series. And today and tomorrow are the last days which we're offering it on the program. And the name of the series is The Protective Promises of Psalm 91, Laying Claim to Every Promise in the 91st Psalm. And as I've told you through the years, Denise and I have proclaimed the promises of the 91st Psalm over us, over our kids, over our parents, over our family, over our grandkids, over our ministry, over our partners. My friends, these words have lived in our heart and in our mouth. It's not just enough to believe them. You've got to say them. When you say them, you activate these promises. And in fact, we're told in Psalm 91 verse 2, I will say to the Lord, and then you begin to quote these things. Psalm 91 is supposed to be a declaration of faith. You're to put all of these promises into your mouth and say them out loud. A confession, a declaration of faith. But you can't declare them if you don't know what they are. And you need to understand what you're declaring. And that's why I want you to have the whole series the Protective Promises of Psalm 91, and it comes with this amazing study guide. And I'm telling you, when I put together these notes, I really worked hard for you. I wanted you to have all these treasures from the Hebrew and from the Greek and really understand what the protective promises in the 91st Psalm are all about. And when you have the study guide, it is so wonderful because you can read the material while you're seeing or hearing the whole series. And I want you to also have Vicki Burke's book in today and tomorrow, the last days, which we're offering it. And it's called Help, It's Dangerous Out There. The subtitle says how to walk in supernatural protection. My friends, God wants you to walk in supernatural protection. And we're living in the end of the age when we need supernatural protection. We're living in a world that's gone crazy and it's going to get crazier if we believe what the Bible says. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, it's going to be very perilous before we sail to the end of the age. And my friends, we're in those waters right now. So we need to know how to be protected. And this book, Help, It's Dangerous Out There, How to Walk in Supernatural Protection, will really enable you to grab hold of the power of God to protect you and to protect those whom you love. Say amen. And if you're a partner, I want to say thank you. My friends, you're a part of the most wonderful family. Our partners are just amazing. And one of the greatest privileges in our ministry is to be a partner with you and to pray for you. You do so much to help us do the work of the ministry. It doesn't matter how much you give, every gift is significant because all of it is needed for us to take the Bible to the ends of the earth. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 10, 10 21, the lips of the righteous feed many. And I know that is my assignment and I'm doing my part and I'm able to fulfill this call because you're doing your part. That's why we call you a partner. Thank you for being a partner with our ministry. This program is coming into people's homes because of you. 
Thank you, partner. And if you've been thinking about becoming a partner, but you haven't done it yet, would you do it today? Just go online. You can become a partner right now, or you can give us a call to become a partner. And as I always tell you, we're going to send you two books as our way of saying welcome to the family. We're going to send you Denise's book, which is called The Gift of Forgiveness. And we're going to send you my book, which is called Life in the Combat Zone, because we always give these two books to anybody who becomes a part of our partner family. And when you reach out to us, by calling or going online, please let us know how to pray for you. Jesus said that if two of you will agree as touching anything, I'll do it. And we believe that and we see it all the time. We'll get into agreement with you and Jesus will go to work. But we'll pray better for you if you'll let us know how to pray. So call us or send us an email. But reach for your Bible. And today we're going to return to the 91st Psalm. And I'm so excited for what we're going to study together today. But let's again say why we have the 91st Psalm. This is so important. The children of Israel had lived in Egypt for more than 400 years. That's a long time. Well, even though life in Egypt toward the end was not so good because of slavery, to a certain degree, they'd become city folks. They had not lived in the wilderness for four years centuries. And when they made their big departure from the powers of Egypt, they found themselves out in the wilderness confronting things they had never seen for 400 years, like snakes and beasts and enemies that attacked them in the night and during the day. And they were hearing weird noises at night out in the middle of the wilderness. And they were just tempted to be taken with the spirit of fear. These were city folks who now found themselves out in the wilderness. And Moses said, hey guys, it's going to be okay if you abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And this brings us to Psalm 91, verse 1, which really is the anchor to this whole text. If you don't get this verse, you're going to miss the whole chapter. This is foundational. He says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Can you say amen to that? But notice it says he who dwells in the secret place. The secret place describes a secret chamber, a place of privacy, a place of hiding, a place of concealment, and really it describes us being placed in Christ. My friends, there is no safer place than being placed inside Jesus Christ. We're tucked away deeply, deeply in him. He is the secret place of the most high and most high in Hebrew is Elion, the one with supreme authority over everyone. And my friends, because we're tucked away in Jesus, we're complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. That is what the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. But the verse goes on to say, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And the word shadow describes a shadow. It describes a shelter or a hiding place, and it depicts the shadow of the Almighty as a place of shelter, a place where you can hide, and a place where you can be protected. The word Almighty is the word Shaddai, which describes the God who provides and the God who overpowers and overcomes and my, this is so powerful because when you're dwelling in the shadow of the Almighty, His shadow falls on you. His provision falls on you. His overcoming power falls on you. So much comes on you when you dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. But for you to be in His shadow, it means you've got to walk very close to Him and you've got to stay in step with Him. As I've told you, it's as if you wanted to walk in my shadow. Well, if you wanted to walk in my shadow, first of all, you got to be pretty close to me because my shadow only extends so far. Secondly, if I move and you don't move, just like that, you're out of my shadow. The only way you can stay in my shadow is if you stay in step with me. And inferred in this promise is that you have to stay in step with the Lord for you to be in his shadow. There are many people that are in Christ, they're saved, they really are saved, but they've kind of wandered. They're no longer walking close to the Lord like they once did, and they can't lay claim to these promises. These promises do not automatically come to every Christian. They come to Christians who are living in the shadow. 
They're walking with the Lord. They're in step with the Lord. They're so close to the Lord that his shelter, his shadow, his provision, his power falls on them. And in that shadow, there really is divine protection. So let me ask you, are you staying in step with the Lord? That is where you're going to find all the protective promises in Psalm 91. Then you come to verse 2, and it says, I will say of the Lord, and as I've told you, the Hebrew actually says, I will say to the Lord. That is fundamental for you to understand. It tells us right from the start, this entire chapter is not something you're just supposed to privately believe or think about. You're supposed to say it. It is a confession and declaration of faith. I will say to the Lord. You've got to put these words in your mouth for them to be activated. And it says, I will say of the Lord, or I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Verse 3, surely, oh, I love that. Surely He will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Verse 4, He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His immovable, absolute truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Verse 5, Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Verse 6, Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. We covered that yesterday. Verse 7, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. We also covered that yesterday. Verse 8, only with your eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Verse 9, because, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There's that word habitation. There again is a picture of you abiding in his habitation or in his shadow. And because you've made the Lord, which is my refuge. And by the way, the word refuge describes a refuge or a shelter. That's who the Lord is. He's a refuge. He is a shelter. Even the most high, and the word most high here is again the word Elion, which means the one who is supreme above all, even the most high thy habitation the word habitation describes a habitation, a dwelling place or a place of residency. And here again, you friend, are dwelling in the shadow of the Almighty. That's your place of residency. That's your place of dwelling. You're living in the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, what a place to live. And because of it, because of it, here's the result. Verse 10. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. That is amazing. You know why? Because evil cannot dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. Sickness and plagues and pestilence, it cannot dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. It just can't exist there. And if you are living in the shadow of the Almighty, there shall no evil befall thee. And the word evil in the Hebrew describes something that is like an affliction, something that is bad, a calamity, something that is distressful, evil, something of injury, something that is just filled with misery, some kind of unhappiness or sadness, which means if you're living in the shadow of the Almighty, which is a place of great joy, we know that because the book of Psalms Chapter 16 says, in thy presence is fullness of joy. There's joy in the shadow of the Almighty. And if you're living in the shadow of the Almighty, guess what? You're not going to run into affliction. You're not going to run into something bad. No calamity, no distress, no evil, no injury, no misery. You're not going to experience unhappiness or sadness if you're living and abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. In fact, this says it won't even befall thee. The word befall means to befall, to encounter, or to meet. You're not even going to run into it. Why? Because there's joy in the presence of the Lord. And when you're living in his shadow, you're living in a place of joy. And those things cannot exist there. But it goes on to say, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. The word plague is a Hebrew word which describes an attack or a strike of some kind. It is the very Hebrew word to describe a physical sickness or some kind of a mental sickness. 
And here we have the promise that if you're living in the shadow of the Almighty, you're not going to be stricken with some kind of physical or mental sickness. Why? Because that's a place where God's goodness is. His overpowering presence is there. Everything good is there. And sickness cannot dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. And if that's where you're dwelling, then you're dwelling in a place where no plague shall come nigh your dwelling. And when the Bible says come nigh, the Hebrew word means to approach or to come near. And the word dwelling is the Hebrew word for a tent. It's talking about your body or the place where you live. So it's not going to come near you. You live in this body. That's your tent. It's not going to come near your physical residence. Why? Because your physical residence is in the shadow of the Almighty and it cannot exist there. My friends, this is the best place in the earth for you to live. If your dwelling is in the shadow of the Almighty, no plague will ever meet you there because it cannot exist there. But then you go to Psalm 91, verse 11. Hold on to your seat. This is powerful. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Notice it says he shall. This is that guarantee of what God will do. He will do for anyone who is abiding in his shadow. He shall give his angels charge over thee. And the Hebrew word for shall give charge means to appoint, to charge, to command, to set an order, to give an explicit assignment or a responsibility. The word angels, whether you read it in Hebrew or Greek, describes angels or divine messengers. But the word charge here is very important because it describes a very strict command as one who would charge a servant to carry out a task very faithfully. And in such an event, one would charge that servant to do his business without negligence, and in such moment, the master would describe the task explicitly to the servant so the servant cannot misunderstand it. And according to Psalm 91, verse 11, the Lord charges angels. This is what he does with angels. He gives them explicit instructions to watch over us and to take care of us. And this makes me think of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, which says, Are they not all ministering spirits? It's talking about angels. Send forth, dispatched, to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. That's me and that's you. Or when we come to Matthew chapter 8, verse 10, Jesus describes guardian angels, and he remarkably says, Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones, talking about children. For I say unto you that in heaven they're angels, they're angels. He's saying every little child has an angel. Their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. And in these verses, in Hebrews 1.14, we find that angels are dispatched to minister to you and me because we are the inheritors of salvation. We also find that angels watch over children. We call them guardian angels. And in fact, guardian angels are assigned to every human being when they are born and they stay with them throughout their lives to protect, to bring answers and to do the will of God in the life of believers. And in Psalm 34, verse 7, it promises, the angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivers them. These angels bring delivering power. Say amen. But hey, let's go back to Psalm 91, verse 11 and pick up. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. The words to keep thee in Hebrew means to keep, to guard, to preserve, to watch. It is from a root meaning to hedge about, which means these angels literally encamp round about us, just like we're told in Psalm 34, verse 7. And their job is to guard us and to preserve us and to watch over us and Verse 11 goes on to say, to keep thee in all thy ways. The word all in Hebrew means all, all together, in all manner, in all ways. And the word ways in both Hebrew and Greek really means roads. And here we have the promise. It doesn't matter what road of life you take. The angels are assigned to protect you, to preserve you, to guard you, and be with you on every road of life. That is the promise of God. And it goes on to say in verse 12, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest 
Thou dash thy foot against a stone. What does that mean? They shall bear thee up in their hands. Well, you think that it means they're going to hold you up. And in fact, it does mean that. But the Hebrew word also very importantly means to advance, to bring forth. Which means when you're living and abiding in the shadow of the Almighty, angels are dispatched and part of their job is not just to hold you up in their hands, but part of their job is to bring you forth and to help you advance. Which means if you're struggling getting ahead, the angels have been dispatched to help you, to bring you forth, to help you advance, and also to hold you up in their hands. And the Hebrew word for hands describes the palm of the hands. You write in the palm of their hands so that you will not dash your foot. And the Hebrew means to dash, to gore, to hurt, to stumble, strike, or stub your foot against a stone or against any kind of encumbrance that has been set in your way. And it pictures one who's dashed his foot and he's fallen into some kind of calamity or into some kind of distress. It can depict hurt or mischief that tries to injure you on the path of life. And we find that God extends protection and care to his people through angels as he commands them and charges them explicitly to keep them and bear them up in their hands and to help them advance and to come forth in life. The angels are to accompany, to defend, and to preserve those who dwell in the shadow of the Almighty That's amazing. And if necessary, angels will even turn your steps in another direction and reroute you to steer you clear of danger. They've been charged to carefully watch over all the interests of anyone who abides in the shadow of the Almighty. Is that you? I think that is just amazing. Amazing. But... The whole of Psalm 91, 11 says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Now hold on. We already know from Psalm 91, verse 2, that this is supposed to be a confession. I will say to the Lord, you're supposed to put these words in your mouth. So let's personalize it and say, repeat with me the words on the screen. You give your angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. Then Psalm 91, verse 12, in its entirety, in the King James Version says, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. But let's personalize it and let's say, the words are on the screen, say it out loud with me. Your angels bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. My friend, these are amazing protective promises and they belong to you if you're abiding in the shadow of of the Almighty. I'm out of time, but I'll be back in just a minute and I'm going to pray for you. Psalm 91 is packed full of protective promises for every believer who abides in the shadow of the Almighty. The Bible promises that when you live under God's mighty shadow, no evil can touch you and no plague or sickness will come near you. In fact, if you live under God's mighty shadow, angels are assigned to watch over you. In this insightful series, Rick will answer questions like, how do you dwell in the shadow of the Almighty? How does God deliver you from the snare of the fowler? How is it possible for no sickness to come near you? This 10-part series, The Protective Promises of Psalm 91, laying claim to every promise in the 91st Psalm, will show you how to lay claim to these protective promises. And it is available in digital or physical format, starting at just $20. In addition, we want to offer you Vicki Burke's powerful book, Help! It's dangerous out here. In this book, you'll learn the secrets to avoiding deadly mistakes, the intentional steps you can take to overcome fear, and the keys to living with immunity from the devil's attacks. You'll also learn how to operate with an unshakable confidence in God's supernatural protection. Today, this book can be yours for $15. Don't miss this bundle offer of the 10-part series, The Protective Promises of Psalm 91, laying claim to every promise in the 91st Psalm and the book, Help, It's Dangerous Out Here. And be sure to request your free design print of Psalm 91 or visit renner.org to download a copy. Call the number on your screen or visit renner.org to order. Call or go online now. 
Well, friend, I pray that today you didn't just get information. I pray you got divine revelation from what you've heard today as we've rendezvoused together around the 91st Psalm. And I want you to have a copy of the 91st Psalm that's beautifully designed so that you'll display it in your home or in the place where you work. And we've designed it. Look, here it is. This is mine. And you can have a copy of this. If you go to our website, you can download it and print it yourself. That's the fastest way for you to get it. But if you don't have a printer, then just call the number on the screen or send us an email and we will send you a copy of this beautifully designed 91st Psalm. And when you get the paper version of it, you can frame it just like I have framed mine. Keep these words in front of your eyes all the time. Keep them in your heart and keep them in your mouth. But today and tomorrow is also the last two days which we're offering the entire series, which is called the Protective Promises of Psalm 91, laying claim to every promise in the 91st Psalm. And it comes with this amazing study guide. My friends, I put the meat, the potatoes, the steak on the table. All you have to do is get in a chair, pull up to the table, dive in. It's all there for you. I want you to really get this in your heart. And we're also offering you the book by Vicki Burke today and tomorrow is the last day called Help, It's Dangerous Out There, How to Walk in Supernatural Protection. You really can walk in supernatural protection. But you can order this. You can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call right now. And we're waiting for the phone to ring right now. And when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you. But Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for these amazing promises that belong to us if we abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, help us to draw near to you so these promises will be activated in our lives. Lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow, but remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Denise and I are going to be coming to the United States, and we're going to be ministering in some churches. And if you can join us, please try to come to one of the following meetings. On Saturday and Sunday, February 3rd and 4th, we're going to be with Pastors Jim and Ann Freeze at the Joy Church in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. On Sunday, February 18th, we'll be with Pastor Frederick Price Jr. and Lady Angel Price at the Crenshaw Christian Center Faith Dome in Los Angeles, California. And on Tuesday and Wednesday, February 27th and 28th, we'll be with Pastor Jerry Moore at the Word of Life Church in Miami, Florida. I cannot begin to tell you how happy Denise and I would be to see you in one of those meetings, but please go online for more detailed information. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.